Listen, my guest has discovered an ancient Jewish formula that cures cancer, heart disease, mental problems, I mean much more, next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Dr. John Miller. I am so confused about vitamins, about these infomercials on vitamins. One person says, if you take calcium, it'll cure everything. Another person says, if you take this other thing, it'll cure. I mean, and I, I just don't, if you're like me, I don't know what to do. So I've got an expert here. I've got a man that uh, has, has had the largest alternative health clinic in Tampa, Florida. He's a chiropractor. He's licensed in four uh, healing arts. If anyone knows, he knows. And now you're really confusing me. You're telling me you're scrapping the whole deal. And you're going back to this ancient Jewish formula. Now, Dr. John Miller, uh, you, you spent a lifetime trying to heal people. Why have you spent the last 30 years studying the Last Supper, the, the Passover Seder of Jesus? Now, wh why, why would you have all this expertise? Why, why are you zeroing in there? <clears throat> well, I had spent a lifetime studying how to get sick people well. I was raised in churches, and when I read 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 29 and 30, it said, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak, sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, I read that, and to me, what, what people told me that said is, I got to love everyone, and then I won't sleep or die. Is that what it means? Well, that's not what it says at all. Well, wait, that's what I, I was told it yeah. said. <laughs> I, as a physician, that, that verse really puzzled me when it said, a Christian's health will be determined by how he takes communion. Your weakness, your sickness, and your premature death will be determined by how you take communion. That's what the Word of God said. Now, I'd been raised in churches. I'd watched hundreds of people Sick people go to the communion table, eat the bread, drink the wine, and leave sick. So I didn't see in reality this verse of Scripture working. So you, I began to study. It, you saw it just as tradition, just right. another nice custom. That's true. When you realize that the Lord provided two elements to remember His death, the wine and the bread. If there was only spiritual healing to be had at the communion table, which the majority of church goes to the communion table for, there would only be the cup. But the bread represents the body. Before Jesus died for our spiritual healing, they beat Him 39 lashes with a scourge for our physical healing. That's why the Bible says, by His stripes we were healed. Now, do you believe there's any significance in the fact that it was 39? It specifically says that. I have heard that there's 39 major diseases that all other diseases come from. I don't know whether that's true or not. There was a specific reason why it was 39. Under Jewish law, you were beaten 40 lashes by law. But if you went over 40, then you got whipped yourself. So they counted to 39 and stopped. But you know what I find fascinating, John, is in the approved Jewish scriptures, uh, in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah that was written 800 years before Jesus came to earth, it states that he would bear all of our, in the Hebrew it says this, all of our illnesses and all of our diseases. And before prejudice was involved, the ancient rabbis studied this and they said, this is a Messiah but he is the leprous Messiah, because leprosy was like the cancer of its day. They called him the leprous Messiah because the ancient rabbi saw whoever this one would be, he would have all of our pains and all of our diseases on him. And that's what it says in the original Hebrew of Isaiah 53. It says that in the original Greek of Matthew 8:17, also, quoting Isaiah 53, 4. Uh, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. We've when you study the atonement, you find Jesus not only was made to be sin with our sin, but he was made to be sick with our sicknesses. So listen, cancer healed. 
by this ancient Jewish formula. Now, I've been saying ancient Jewish formula. Don't go away. We're going to explain why this whole thing is Jewish. Be right back. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Dr. John Miller, and we're investigating an ancient Jewish formula. You see, we're coming into a time in history where the original power that was in the church is being restored, but in order to restore it, we have to look at our biblical Judaic roots. Now, Dr. John Miller has spent 20 years studying communion, and to understand communion, you have to understand the Jewish Passover. Explain that, Dr. Miller. Well. Everyone knows that is any student of the Bible at all that the Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt was a picture of the atonement of Jesus at Calvary. And there was 10 miracles done and that didn't make Pharaoh let his people go. That represented the 10 commandments. They didn't free the people. Uh, Paul says they condemned the people because they couldn't keep them. So they had to have the blood of the lamb painted over the doorpost. That's what freed the people. You hear a lot about the blood over the doorpost, but very little about the rest of the lamb. God told Moses to have them roast the lamb and eat ye all of it, even the pertinence thereof. They had to eat the head, the arms, the legs, everything. They were to eat it with their staff in their hand, their robe on, and their sandals on. In other words, be ready to be physically delivered when you eat the body of the lamb. They came out, Psalms 105 verse 37 says, God brought them forth with silver and gold and not one feeble one among them. The blood of the lamb saved their life. The body of the lamb healed their bodies. We have movies that they show them coming out on stretchers and uh, crutches and all. But according to the Bible, that wasn't so. They came out without one feeble one among them. And in the Hebrew, that it was specifically talking about uh, diseases of the legs. Can, can you picture a million and a half slaves coming out of bondage and not one feeble? And you believe that was just because they ate all of the lamb. Right. There's always a physical and a spiritual significance and meaning to everything God does. When they ate the brain of that lamb, their brains were to be healed. But they were also to take on the mind of Christ. When they ate the eyes of that lamb, they were not only to have their eyes healed, but see things the way Jesus sees them. When they ate the heart of that lamb, their heart was to be healed, but they were to take the heart of Christ too. I have a friend that was a very famous race driver, drove Indy twice, that wrecked on the Sacramento Mile and lost the peripheral vision of his right eye. Mm -hmm. Two o'clock in the morning in my living room, we broke the bread, and he imaged that bread as that lamb, and when he ate the eye of that lamb, his eye was instantly healed. Dr. Miller, on my radio show, you said something to me that changed my life on this ancient Jewish pattern this ancient Jewish formula. You see, I've taken communion many times, but what you said to me that was so mind-blowing is rather than exercise your faith to the point where you need an immediate miracle, an instant healing, if you will, why don't you look at taking communion like you take medicine? You take medicine three times a day? Every time you take communion, believe you are being a little bit more healed. And it's a progressive healing. How did you come to this? Well, in Christian teaching on healing, according to the faith laws, the scripture says, therefore, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So when we pray, we have to believe we did receive. Now that's tough for most people to do. In communion, if you take it on a regular basis, you can believe that you're being progressively healed and it takes the pressure off of having to put up enough faith to bring about the healing all at once. Now, in, of course, we know that the Passover Seder looked back to the Israelite deliverance out of 
Egypt, but it also looked forward to the cross, Jesus on the cross. And at the last Passover, when Jesus instituted communion to fulfill the Passover and all of its meaning, he said, as oft as you do this. Now, different churches have different rules and regulations. Some do it once a month, some do it once a year at Passover time and all variations in between. So when I studied it, I realized that we have the body of Christ in the Bible. Then he took the bread and he said, this is my body, which was broken for you. So we have the bread representing the body of Christ. But in John 6, Jesus said three times, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. But I tell you, I'm the real bread that came down from heaven. Unless you eat my flesh, you have no life in you. So the manna in the wilderness was a type of the eating the body of Christ. You know, there's no way of understanding this healing if you don't understand your Jewish roots. What we're going to do is we're going to take a Jewish communion. If you want to get your wine and bread real quick, right after this word, we'll be, we'll be back. And I tell you, you will either have a miracle or a gradual miracle, which is a healing. Both are pretty good. No other options. They'll go away. We'll be right back. Hello, it's Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Dr. John Miller. And we are investigating an ancient Jewish formula that heals everything from cancer. You were telling me about Troy Miller. Yes. Troy Miller is a pastor friend of mine in Florida, no relation, but he had cancer of the kidney. And the Lord spoke to his mother while he was in the hospital. She went down to the hospital and had communion with him in the hospital bed. They had already performed a biopsy on his liver. And not only was the cancer healed in the liver, the cancer cells died in the liver, but as the pathologist had the biopsy up in the lab looking at it, he testified that he watched the cancer cells die in that biopsy. There must be so much life wrapped up into this ancient Jewish Passover Seder celebration. I'm ready. I mean, there are a few things I want God to heal. Now, it's either going to be a miracle or a progressive healing, but no in between. Do you agree? Yes, but they need to develop it as a way of life. As the Israelites ate the manna every day for their yes. physical healing. And in Acts 2, they took communion every day from house to house. So it didn't have to be in the church? No. Most people are accustomed to only a minister given the communion. But in the New Testament, know ye not ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Well, Sid Roth is the resident priest in this temple. It's not only your privilege, but it's your obligation to perform the functions of the temple. And taking the lamb to offer it to God was part of the function of the temple. And we do it in the New Testament by taking communion. So it's not only our privilege, but our obligation to take care of this temple. And what does discern the body mean? Explain that. It said many are sick or sleep or die because we don't discern the body. We don't realize that that bread represents the body of Christ that was beaten for our healing and actually was made to be sick with our sicknesses according to Isaiah 53:10. The King James read, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. But so if he was sick with my sicknesses, what does that mean to me? with the sickness that is in my body at this moment. It means that you shouldn't have it. He dealt with sin on the same basis he, he dealt with sickness. He took our sin in him and died and paid the price. So we don't have the sin. Right. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He was made to be sick with our sicknesses at Calvary. So we shouldn't have to bear them. And of course, like everything else, it only comes into manifestation with faith in what God says about it. When you put faith in the fact that Jesus took your sins and died and was resurrected, then you're saved. Only when we put faith in it. And since we live in a physical body and 
respond to material things, God gave us this physical ceremony for us to sit down and remember what Jesus did. You know, since you're teaching, I do this once a day, but I'm thinking of doubling up on my medicine. I'm thinking of doing it twice a day. Is there anything wrong with that? I had a preacher call me about his daughter that was dying of Epstein-Barr, chronic fatigue syndrome. It's a virus halfway between mononucleosis and AIDS. You never get rid of it. 39% of her liver and kidneys were destroyed with it. She worked in a children's diagnostic hospital. He brought her to me. I gave her bread and wine and gave her tape on communion. In two weeks, the doctors in the hospital were coming down to her office and saying, this is an incurable thing and your reports are coming back negative. What did that doctor in Florida do? She told me she three times a day played the tape, meditated on the verses of scripture and took communion, just like she was doing her medicine. I'm ready now, but what happened to her? <laughs> as oft as you do this, uh, so there's no limit. Uh, the other day I was in my office. But was she healed? Yes. That's the, that's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Yeah. So what's going to happen when, when you participate and I participate and you participate right now? What's going to happen, Dr. Miller? They will be healed when they discern that when they eat that bread, that that's the body that took their sicknesses in it and paid the price. So can I say that if I uh, uh, have a particular disease, let's suppose I had migraine headaches, which I don't, I can say I am exchanging Jesus' wholeness from my migraine headache yeah. because it was upon him. You had, you had migraines. Yes. What happened to them? They were taken completely away when I started studying and taking communion. Hmm. That was from an injury that I had had to my head. Are you ready to partake? I'm, I'm ready to fly, I can tell you. I can't wait. You at home, if you will get the bread and the wine, we'll have communion with you. Father, we lift up this bread to you right now as representing the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that we see in your holy scripture took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses and endured a terrible beating for our healing. We discern, we remember what Jesus did for us at Calvary. And as we receive the body of the Lord Jesus Christ into our bodies, we receive the healing that he provided 2,000 years ago. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, ha'motzi lechem min ha'aretz. Amen. You may eat. And then he took the wine, which represents the blood, and he prayed that ancient Jewish prayer, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Borei pri hagafin, Amen.